You can predict where a stock price is likely to go using the stock chart. You just need to understand a few simple principles. I'm gonna show you what those are as we take a look at the charts of Twitter and Lexaria. So for many, reading a stock chart seems to be a dark science, something that is full of weird indicators and, and ideas that don't make any sense. And yet, reading a stock chart is an important skill for every investor, for every trader, because it can really help you avoid bad stocks and identify stocks that have very good potential. To be able to read a chart isn't that hard. You have to understand six or seven things and that's what I'm gonna to try to show you today. So the chart that I have open right now is Twitter. And let's just start with some of these core concepts of reading a stock chart that every investor and trader must know. The first thing we're gonna talk about is to ask the question, who is in control of the market for that stock? Are the buyers in control or are the sellers in control? Another way to ask that question is, is the market optimistic? or pessimistic about that company. So looking at the chart of Twitter, what you can see is that going back to August of last year, the tops were falling. When the tops are falling, very simply, the sellers are in control. Since late February and going into March, the bottoms have been rising. That means the buyers are in control. So first simple rule is if there's falling tops on the chart, the sellers are in control. If there's rising bottoms, the buyers are in control. You do not want to buy a stock when the sellers are in control. Now, the chart that I was showing you there is a daily chart, which would be appropriate for a, uh, an investor, what we call a position trader. Someone that's going to hold that stock for weeks or months is a position trader. But a day trader is going to look at a very different chart. A day trader is going to be focused on a one minute, two minute, five minute chart. A swing trader is going to be looking at a 15 or 30 minute chart. And so when you think about who's in control, you have to also think in the context of the kind of trading you want to do on that stock. And again, if I'm a day trader, I'm not going to be looking at this daily chart. I'm going to look at a two day chart. So I can click on the little 2D right there. And then I can see what's happening just in the last two days. And I can see that there were falling tops. And then yesterday we started to get rising bottoms into the close. This morning we gapped up on news that Elon Musk wants to take or buy the company entirely. But since that news came out, there's been falling tops. And so the market is telling us that it doesn't see a whole lot of credibility to that offer. That's why the sellers are winning through the day. So if I'm a day trader, I don't wanna be a buyer of this stock today because it's been in the control of the sellers. All right, so that's the first thing. Who's in control, buyers or sellers? Next thing we wanna talk about, and let's go back to the one year chart here, is when does control change? Well, typically that happens with a break of trend. And so if I drew a trend line across here, and this is the cycle of falling tops to define that trend line, and then I see that the rising bottoms start to form, when that trend line was broken from a rising bottom, that was the first point to be a buyer of Twitter in the recent past, in the last year anyway, because that was the day that the stock broke its downward trend line from a rising bottom. Now, what motivated that? Well, we know now that Elon Musk has been building a position in Twitter and got up to about a 9% ownership of the company. Well, he didn't tell people before he was going to buy the stock, because that, of course, would make the stock go up on its own. He had, you know, his bankers went in and started accumulating the stock. And that's what creates the buying support that generated the break of the downward trend. And that buying culminated in the news that came out here when it was announced that Elon Musk had accumulated a 9% interest in the shares of Twitter. Well, the thing is, if you wait for the news, you're too late. And this is another core concept that I want everyone to understand. The stock market is not fair. There are always going to be some people that know more than the rest of us. And if you just follow what the chart tells you to do, what you're really doing 
is anticipating what the news will be in the near term, in the future. Because the market tends to move in anticipation of news first. And in the case of Twitter, we saw that this stock was moving up for about two weeks before the news came up, before the stock made that large gap to the upside where it went from $39 to $50 in one day. Well, that's after that downward trend line was already broken. Okay, so when we talk about a trend line being broken, that is a break of resistance. Now we can have trend lines of resistance and we can have horizontal lines of resistance. So anywhere that the stock has topped out, what I call inflection points, those are trend lines, or sorry, those are horizontal lines of resistance. And so any little peak or valley, uh, sorry, any little peak is an is a area of resistance. Any little valley is an area of support. So you can draw horizontal lines at support as well. Notice when support gets broken, that leads to a downward trend. When resistance, in this case, trend line resistance gets broken, that leads to an upward trend. So what we want to look for are those times when the market breaks through resistance or breaks down through support, but it's not quite that simple because if you buy every breakout through resistance, you're not going to make any money. One of the key things is that you have to make sure that there is a period of low price volatility before the break. So that's our next concept and that is low price volatility. What do I mean by that? Well, if a stock is trading sideways, then it's got low price volatility. If it's trading in a very narrow range where the, the volatility is compressing, where the price swings up and down are compressing and getting smaller and smaller, that is low price volatility. What it means is that the buyers and sellers, they're arguing every day in the market. And when they're arguing every day in the market and there's a big difference of opinion, you're going to get lots of volatility in price. When the buyers and sellers agree, right, they've been going back and forth and they sort of agree that this stock is worth between 60 and $65 a share or is worth $34 a share. When you get that agreement and then you get a break from that, that implies that there is some new information coming into the market that justifies that move. So when the stock broke through this floor from low volatility, there was some new negative information that justified that and that started the downward trend. When the stock broke this downward trend line of resistance from low volatility right here, it was because there was some new information. What was the new information? Elon Musk was buying a large position. Nobody knew that. Small number of people knew it, his bankers, I suppose. But, and he did. Uh, but that was not widely known. It only became widely known when the news came out. By the time the news is comes out, you're usually a dinosaur. So you don't want to wait for the news. That's why I want everyone to learn how to read stock charts. Okay, so we've got optimism and pessimism, support and resistance. We've got low price volatility. And the last critical thing to watch for is abnormal activity. When a stock starts to behave abnormally, it's because there is something going on. And if we look again at Twitter, it started to behave abnormally to the upside right there. The volume was a little bit bigger than normal. It's hard to tell because the scale gets so skewed over here. But trust me, the volume was increasing. The price was moving up when it had been moving down for many months. So that's abnormal. It should stand out to you. Why? Why is it that that's happening? Well, it's because there's something fundamentally important to the value of that company that is driving that price action. We don't need to know what it is. I gave up a long time ago trying to figure out what's behind the move. What I know is that where there is abnormal activity, where there is smoke, there is fire. Let's look at another example. And this we're gonna take a shorter term look at. This is a company that's very hot today. It's called Lexaria Bioscience. And it is trading very abnormally today. Very abnormal price movement, very abnormal volume. This stock has been in the control of the sellers for months, but in the last month, we've actually started to see the buyers taking control because we've got a rising bottom now. 
We didn't have any rising bottoms, this whole downward trend. Now we're getting a rising bottom. And that's because the buyers are getting more aggressive. They were starting to look toward some positive bit of news, some positive developments in the company. Now, the people that follow this company the closest, that really know what this company does, they're the ones who started accumulating the shares in the last month and creating that rising bottom. Today, the stock's traded over 40 million shares and it's got lots of upward price action. That is what we take note of. And if we're a day trader, we can watch that chart looking for who's in control. So we're gonna make this a one day chart and I'm gonna make it a one minute chart. And again, you can see that the buyers have been in control all day long until maybe 10 minutes ago when that cycle, whoops, when that cycle was broken. And now the sellers have just suddenly taken control. That's a reason to be nervous if you're an owner of this. What we want to do as, as day traders is find stocks where the buyers are in control and buy pullbacks and breaks of pullbacks. So the stock goes up, it pulls back, buy the break of the pullback. Don't chase these things when they're running away from their trend. We wanna buy them when they come back to the trend and break the pullback. Come back to the trend, break the pullback. What do many people do? Because of the fear of missing out, they chase the stock higher. They wanna be a buyer up here because that's when they're worried that they're missing out on the trade of a lifetime, right? You wanna do that. You wanna find stocks where the buyers are in control, where there's some abnormal activity that tells you something is going on, and then you wait, you time your entries on weakness. The stock pulls back and it breaks that pullback. That's something I have called a pullback play. Now I'm gonna be doing some webinars um, very soon in the next couple of weeks and they're free to attend. They're like an hour long where I'm gonna teach a lot more of this stuff. If you'd like to join any of those, just go to the trader training menu on stock scores, go to upcoming events and on that page, you can see some of these upcoming webinars. Again, they're all free. Um, you, you register online at my website here, stockscores.com. And then we're gonna talk for an hour on different elements of this. If you wanna be a day trader, I've got a webinar on day trading. You wanna be an investor, I've got a webinar on investing. You wanna learn how to avoid crashes and find the hot stocks. It's all gonna be in these different webinars and they all start uh, Saturday, April 23rd and then go for the week after that. So I hope that You'll join me for some of those. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a comment. What do you think about where Twitter is going, where Lexaria is going? And subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, and most importantly, trade well.